about a dream. A dream within a dream. Two years ago this week, we were joined by Renee to talk about Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures. Peter Jackson's genre-bending period piece about the Parker Hume murder case that happened in Christchurch, New Zealand in 1954. Tonight, we're talking to Renee about another film from her part of the world, this time right near her, an hour from Melbourne in Victoria, Australia, Picnic at Hanging Rock, the 1975 mystery film directed by Peter Weir. It showed a, an aspect of Australian life that no one had ever thought of. This is the most influential film of Peter's, in my view. The Australian director who would go on to direct films as diverse as Gallipoli, Dead Poets Society, Master and Commander, and The Truman Show, and eventually being given the 2022 Academy Honorary Award for Lifetime Achievement, as well as six Academy Award nominations throughout his career. Then you also want people who can handle a tough and tight corner, a difficult situation. That will come up. Uh, you want to be able to trust them. So in a funny kind of way, I don't cast people in, in you know, the grips department, but the department heads know way back to Australia that I'm very interested in the people they're putting together in their department. But before he could have an illustrious career in Hollywood, Peter Weir was very much an Australian director. He first worked for the Commonwealth Film Unit, later called Film Australia, where he made documentaries including Three Directions in Australian Pop Music, a documentary about three Melbourne rock acts, Spectrum, the Captain Matchbox Whoopie Band, and Wendy Saddington. Oh, how complete I used to be And in these times that we were He went on to direct a cult classic black comedy, The Cars That Ate Paris, a low-budget black comedy about a fictional town where the inhabitants cause car crashes and live off the proceeds. This movie put him in collaboration with the twin brothers Hal and Jim McElroy, who would go on to produce Picnic and Hanging Rock. also put Peter Weir squarely on the Australian New Wave, a globally recognized interest in Australian cinema. Picnic at Hanging Rock was adapted from the 1967 novel of the same name, written by Australian novelist Joan Lindsay. The story in Picnic at Hanging Rock about three schoolgirls and their teacher who disappeared in 1900 on a Valentine's Day picnic at Hanging Rock was fictional, based on a dream that Joan had about a place she had visited as a child on holidays. She strongly hints that it's true. You, you get a feeling. She never says it is. But, but the way it's written, it has a very strong documentary feel to it. So I thought, whether I get the job or not, I, I must ask this question, otherwise it's a bad start, and I have to know. She has to, she has to tell me all her secrets. Peter did ask Joan Lindsay uh, whether it was a true story or not, and she hedged. And she said, um, young man, I hope that you do not ask me the question again. And then sort of mulled over it a bit and said, it's based on fact. And I said, well, I'll move to another difficult question and you may tell me that you're not going to answer this. But I said, I mean, do you think it's wide open what happened to these girls? I mean, in your mind, do you think they fell down a hole? Do you think, for example, they were abducted by aliens? And she said, any of the above. The rock in the book is a monolith. The story spreads of their dis disappearance, first locally, then internationally, as the parents of the students at Apple Yard College find out and begin withdrawing their children from the school. This causes the college to begin to shut down and the faculty to make other arrangements. When one girl is found with no memory of what happened, it causes even more distress. In the novel, the rest of the girls are never found. However, other people, some of the faculty, the headmistress and Sarah, the orphan, who was roommates with Miranda who disappeared, all end up dying tragically because of the events at Hanging Rock. The picnic at Hanging Rock is considered one of Australia's greatest novels. A daunting thing for Peter Weir, Hal and Jim McElroy to try to adapt. The film was funded by the South Australian Film Corporation, which was established in 1972 as a government statutory corporation to promote the Australian film industry. It was shot over six weeks in 1975 and cost 440,000 Australian dollars. Only 3,000 of that needed to be raised by private donors. The film's production design was inspired by the Australian Impressionists of the Heidelberg School. The novel was also inspired by Impressionist paintings as Joan Lindsay was a painter especially an 1875 painting by William Ford called At the Hanging Rock, which shows a group of girls picnicking at the Hanging Rock. Even the title, Picnic at the Hanging Rock, is like the title of a painting. Irma, look at them! Where in 
in the world are they going? Without their shoes! Irma, wait! Wait for me! Please wait! Wait, Irma, wait! Most of the cast of Picnic at Hanging Rock are Australian character actors. Of the cast, the most prolific is probably Jackie Weaver, who played Minnie the Housekeeper, who was in the Silver Linings Playbook, Disaster Artist, five-year engagement in Animal Kingdom decades later. The headmistress is played by Rachel Roberts, who's probably best known for being in City of the Met's Murder on the Orient Express. The two most striking actresses, in my opinion, Margaret Nelson, who played Sarah, and Anne Lambert, who was Miranda, were both in various Australian and British TV productions after this. Not using big stars obviously kept down the low budget on this one. I think Russell's great quality that showed very early on was that he knew how to work exteriors and had an understanding, deep understanding of exterior light. He found a way to make the light diffused. Russell typically developed a whole range of techniques with um, muslin on the lens and Vaseline, etc. He went out and bought all this, these various um, weights of bridal veil. I went into David Jones' wedding department. <laughs> I think I was the only bloke who'd ever been in there, actually. <laughs> um, and I got some sideways glances too, but I, I asked the shop assistant to have a look at, if I could have a look at some wedding veil material. She must have thought I was nuts, I'm sure. There are some practical effects which added to the mystery around the monolith, which were achieved by fabric over various lenses. The film grossed 5.2 million Australian dollars at the box office, equivalent to 40 million today, from the eventual $443,000 budget. And the film is now regarded as one of the greatest Australian films of all time, even winning a 1996 Australian Institute poll for the greatest Australian film of all time. It has inspired many filmmakers. Sofia Coppola was inspired by the film on both the virgin suicides, looking into the thematic vision of teenage death and adolescent sexuality, and borrowing the fashion and visuals for 2017's The Beguiled. Her niece, Gia Coppola, took the costume design for her Gucci collaboration, which she called A Dream Within a Dream, a reference to the picnic at Hanging Rock opening scene. There is kind of an obsession with both the novel and the film, where people pick apart the themes, writing essays, reviews, and making art based on the film. In both cases, film critics like Ebert and the literary associations like the British Association for Victorian Studies have pointed out the post-colonial or settler colonial implications of the story. The Hanging Rock is a location it's one that had incredible spiritual importance to the Kulin nations, the Aboriginal tribal communities around the area, who were forced from it during the 19th century. Before that, it was a place for spiritual ceremony, initiation, business, making tribal law. During the frontier wars, the young Balog, the clan that lived in the region, renamed the area to the Killing Fields. So death and spirituality have been part of the Hanging Rock story. And in the characters who are clearly from Europe, including the young Victorian dandy Michael, played by Dominic Gard, who is a rich outsider from Britain, who becomes obsessed with the missing girls, the colonial nature of the story is pretty front and center. Picnic and Hanging Rock is a kind of spiritual story that despite being fictional, becomes part of the fabric of a community's folklore. Everything begins and ends at exactly the right 